Welcome to the Roundtable Podcast. My name is Shogun. Today we have one of our debate episodes, uh, much anticipated by myself with my friend Hermes, part of a series of debates and podcasts about theology and whether God is real and Christianity and so forth. Today we will be debating creationism or intelligent design theory, sort of whether or not there is a creator. Before we get started, though, Please follow us and subscribe on YouTube and BitChute and Podbean. And uh, we will therefore also find you on the Roundtable Discord server, where we record this every day at 8 p.m. Central. Fantastic. So thank you for joining me once again, my friend Hermes. How are you, sir? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am very well, thank you. So I'm very much looking forward to this. Uh, you said that you would like for me to go first, uh, the way we do our, our debates here. Is there are turns of five minutes each. There will be five turns in this debate. My turn shall go first, and Techno Shaman will be in charge of um, keeping track of the time. When one minute is remaining, he will say one minute remaining. This will allow you to sort of, you know, conclude your remarks, right? So that being said, are you ready, Techno Shaman? Do you have a five minute timer ready to go? Yes, I do. Are you ready, okay. Shogun? I am, sir. Let me take my little puff here. Are you ready? Side on. All right. I'm going to get going. Everybody, uh, close your mics. Welcome, uh, everybody. Okay. Ready? Techno? All right. Begin okay. your round. Okay. So today we will be debating creationism. What this means essentially is the theory that the phenomenon which we observe, which is the complexity of uh, biology, uh, people, plants, society, you know, all the phenomenon that we observe from music to beauty to uh, harmony and symmetry uh, actually have an intelligent designer behind them, right? So if you were to find something like uh, the works of Shakespeare or the King James Bible, one possibility is that it was actually written by a human author. Another possibility is that some non-human force created it uh, in simulation of uh, a human author. So. Uh, if you looked, uh, this is something that me and Hermes have debated before, a long time ago. And one of the most interesting arguments that he made that I had not thought of before is that if you shuffle zeros and ones long enough, you can actually um, create every possible image. And this is true, right? So actually, if you shuffle zeros and ones long, long enough, you'll create every possible photograph. So it is true that that is one way to account for any possible image, just randomly shuffling zeros and ones. However, if you have a picture of your ex-wife or your best friend, it is in fact most likely, almost certainly the case that that is an actual, actual photo of them, right? So this comes down to something like, actually it's interesting about this because I was married for over 12 years, right? And for that 12 years, I was married to an atheist and I was a theist. And she was very intelligent, and I was very, I am very intelligent. She was very intelligent and is very intelligent. And so we also very much enjoyed talking to one another. And so therefore we had this conversation like over and over and over again. And what I eventually realized is you can't necessarily convince someone one way or the other because either um, explanation is totally logically and epistemologically valid. Uh, they both explain the same phenomenon. Uh, however, there is no way to say which is true. Uh, it depends on sort of a preference. So atheists will say it's bottom-up explanation, zeros and ones, and people like myself or Dreamily or other people will call it the top-down, where there's a god or a creator. Now, the point is not that one is true and the other is false. The point is that both are 100% logically valid. And at that point, I will yield the rest of my time. Okay, do I uh, start or wait for... Are you ready to go, Techno? Do you, are you keeping track of the five-minute rounds? Yes, I am. Um, okay. Yeah. Are you ready to go, Hermes? Yes, yes, I am. Okay, begin now. All right, so uh, let's talk about the, the whole concept of intelligent design. As you pointed out, it is you know the phenomenon of complexity that we observe, and we're trying to explain it. Um, and uh, create an intelligent designer is one of the explanations or uh, attempted explanations for uh, the complexity that we observe. 
And uh, I'm here to propose that it's actually uh, logic and a mechanical, a very logical mechanical system of trial and error um, that all this complexity arises from and not some greater design or greater designer. And so first, let me um, talk about what we would expect to see if this universe was created by an intelligent designer. Well, you would see something like a degrading, basically. So if, the, if it started from a greater point, you would see a lesser and a lesser and a lesser. You would see a de degradation of complexity. You wouldn't see evolution, you would see de devolution is basically what you would be seeing. However, you know, when you look in, uh, at, in reality, when you look at life and uh, biological life forms, we actually see that you know, it's billions of years of trial and error. And you know, we can argue that trial and error by definition is not intelligent design. So you know, we can easily infer that it actually it's, it is a, a logical mechanism of things bouncing around. Now, people like to say that this is random, or I'm arguing that the universe is random and it's meaningless. No, I am not. I am arguing that the universe is logical. However, within a logical universe, and by the way, logical simply means that it does not contradict itself. That is all logical means, a universe that does not contradict itself. Now, anyways, so one of the expressions of logic is intelligence, but not all of it. There are many uh, logical expressions that are not intelligent, it's just noise. Just to us, it appears random. Um, it's, so basically, what I'm saying here is that one is contained within the other, not the other way around. And uh, with the JPEG example that you pointed out, and yeah, it is one of my favorite, you know, um, things that I like to evoke, the, the JPEG thought experiment. Most of the permutations, if you shuffle the ones and zeros around, will be noise and garbage and nonsense. Um, very few of those will be coherent uh, stories, uh, stuff written, uh, Shakespeare's, you know, works or any of that stuff. Very few of that will be, lower percentage of that will be that. Very uh, extremely small percentage of that will be that. Uh, will be intelligent and legible by us. So what I'm saying is that, you know, we can see that the universe is actually quite mechanical and, and in its, uh, by in the way it works. And um, another thing that, that we see uh, that we can infer that the universe is not uh, created by some intelligent designer is that, you know, most of the universe is actually not conducive to life. Um, you could say that, as far as we know, Earth is the only um, location that is conducive to life in this entire universe, as far as we know, at least, um, that is the case. Now, there could be some planets, you know, somewhere across the galaxies that are also conducive to life. Who knows? Are they, do they have intelligent life? We don't know. Again, trial and error. And if you want to see how stupid evolution can be, you can look at, uh, you know, single cell life forms and how many billions and billions of generate sorry billions and billions of years and so many generations uh, of evolution and how pretty dumb they really are um, in terms of their ability to continue surviving so what i'm saying by that uh, is that after a couple billion years those those uh, single cell life forms and almost One every minute. other life form will be eradicated uh, humans are the only permutation of life that has the chance of escaping uh, the inevitable doom of planet Earth. So, um, yeah, it's not very intelligent when basically only one species has a, a chance of escaping imminent doom. Um, and the majority of the universe is void of life. And we see a step-by-step uh, -step mechanical process of trial and error by which, um, you know, life forms adapt themselves to the circumstances. And not perfectly, mind you. Um, so again, not intelligent design. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to the other arguments later. I will uh, yield. Okay, then. Are you ready, Shogun? I am. Thank you. I will begin now. Uh, this is what, my second turn? Second turn? Yes. Okay, second turn, beginning now. Okay, so... Um, I think it's important to remind ourselves what we are actually discussing here. We are discussing creationism. And what does this mean? It is the feasibility or plausibility of the possibility that there is an intelligent designer or a creator um, behind what we see. 
So what we see is complex systems, right? Very, very, very complex systems, such as human beings, uh, ecosystems, you know, planetary systems, solar systems, um, you know, very, very high order complexities. And then you look at things like, for example, Venus and the way that Venus describes like a perfect pentagram, right? And this incredibly complex like flower pattern or all these things about the Fibonacci sequence, etc. So the argument is simply that it is a totally rational and possible to postulate a creator for this because what we're seeing is complex. It is uh, very intricate. It is very interesting. It is very detailed. And uh, entropy should say that, you know, things will become less and less complex over time. But if you look at life, obviously we have Beethoven and, and the Taj Mahal and, you know, beautiful dancers, ballerinas, and so forth. So obviously there's a counter-entropic force, right? There's something that is uh, in the direction of order and beauty and harmony and organization and so forth. And the only point that I am defending is that it is completely logically coherent to say that that is because there is actually a creative force, right? Now, I certainly don't dispute that there is an alternative explanation which is that, you know, through some random process, these things have come about. But that's not the debate, right? The debate is, is it possible that there has been a creationist process? Can you disprove that that is the case? No, you can't. Is it possible that that is the case? Yes, it is. Is that a way to account for what you see? Yes, it is, right? So when I look at a tree or a sunset or a beautiful woman, especially a beautiful woman or a sunset or a tree, uh, I can entirely justifiably say this indicates a creator because it is so beautiful and so fantastic and so unlikely that this would be an accident. And then you could say, well, don't you see? This could just be an accident. Well, of course it could be, but it could also not be an accident. So in other words, both uh, positions, top down or bottom up, intelligent design or random chance, have the same explanatory power. They both account for the same phenomenon. Both of them are logically possible. Uh, they're both non-falsifiable. So, you know, my position isn't even that your position is false. My position is that you cannot pretend that your position is more epistemologically valid than mine, because in fact it isn't, right? My creationist position is absolutely just as epistemologically valid as your atheistic position. And on that point, I will uh, yield my time. Okay. Are you ready to go, Hermes? Uh, yeah, I, I'm ready. Um, so, here, I'm going. Okay, All right, begin. so, thanks. Um, you're right. I'm, I'm here to talk about, you know, if, if it's even possible or not. Uh, the initial um, speech or whatever I gave um, was just to say that when we look at observations, we can infer that it is, in fact, mechanical the process because we see it it takes billions of years um, if it was intelligent why would it need billions of years of trial and error um, that's that's the thing but geometry for example as you pointed out like the venus uh, and the pentagram is one of my i'm very fascinated by that and there's actually a couple of other really cool stuff with that which is the it's actually an eight year 13 year cycle connection um, and 8 and 13 are subsequent numbers in the Fibonacci sequence, and the Fibonacci sequence uh, approaching to infinity when you get the ratio is the golden ratio, and the pentagram is the, literally the shape of the golden ratio. You, you get the sign of it. I, I get it. It's, it's really fantastic. But geometry is logical, is what I'm saying. Um, sacred geometry, all these things, these are not some crazy intelligence. It's not a mechanical system that these things come about. Uh, for example, if you want to create what do you call it? Any uh, polygon, just basic simple rules, you know? Um, distance to the center is the same, you know, all sides have the same, you know, length, blah, 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 you get all polygons. There we go. Boom. It's just an all the sacred geometries right there in front of you. Um, and from that, you can create derivatives and blah, blah, blah. And it's all logical, math, geometry, logic. And I, I, I do, th and I, I'm not against the idea that the universe is logical. As I've said, I think that is the nature of the universe. It is logical, but not intelligence. But let's go to the area of me trying to um, make an argument as to why creation is actually not even possible. So the thing is, the, when we try to 
explain complexity by invoking a, a greater uh, designer, there is an issue. Because for one, we're trying to invoke the greatest designer, um, which is, you know, it's fine. You can invoke the greatest designer, you know, the supreme being or whatever. But if your initial understanding is that for complexity, you need to have something greater, then you're reaching critical error when you reach the greatest. Um, because you can't have a greater and greatest. And therefore, that's a logical contradiction. Because if greatness or complexity is derived from greater complexity, then the greatest complexity and the greatest uh, intelligence will be missing the previous uh, point. Because by, by definition, it won't have that. And that's a contradiction. You can't be greatest and still have a greater. Um, so that's, that's a... That's a logical contradiction, actually, with the, uh, when you entertain the idea that there was a creator uh, to explain complexity. So let me, uh, let me see if I can explain that even uh, in a more, uh, more coherent way. So if the wonder, this is what I wrote down, so I'm just going to, if the wonder and complexity of the universe is so much that only a designer is the answer for that complexity and wonder, then that which designs is, designs it is even more complex and wonderful and thus would invoke a greater designer. If you reach the greatest designer, then you cannot invoke a greater designer and thus you cannot justify the greatness. Um, and thus, yeah, this is the problem. You're, 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 you don't have, you, you just, again, remember what I was saying back, uh, you're deferring, yeah? you're just deferring, deferring, deferring. But now I went one step further and I was like, if you entertain this to the end, if you approach infinity, uh, you reach a critical logical error, which is great, greatest needs greater. One that's not possible. Um, so that's that's one of my that's like based, that was like my main critical argument against um, creation. Creator needs a creator, you know, uh, its own creator. Uh, yeah, that's it. I yield. Okay, Shogun, are you ready to go? Yeah. What round are we on, sir? You're on your third round. Okay, of five. I will yes. begin now. So, uh, this will be redundant and repetitive, but it is important. So, there is a phenomenon that needs to be accounted for, and that is what we call existence. You exist, that exists, and we both know that that existence is complex, and so we need a way to account for this complex existence that you and I both experience. When you wake up and you put butter on toast, and you eat that toast, you are engaging in an insanely complex process. And if you have intelligence, as you do, you know there must be an, a way to account for this, right? Now there's two possible ways to account for it. One is, of course, um, random chance over time. So, you know, just shuffle zeros and ones forever over time. The other is an intelligent process. So, in order to quote unquote win this debate that we're having, I don't have to prove to you that the explanation for complexity is intelligent design. I simply have to show you that you cannot possibly disprove that and that my theory of intelligent design is no less logical than yours of um, non-intelligent design. And essentially, uh, that's really all it comes down to. So the point is either a top-down or a bottom-up explanation is valid Neither of them can be falsified. And so the fact that you think one is more logical than the other in this case is no more or less than a preference. It's just like being gay or straight or liking chocolate or vanilla. It's seeing, you know, even red or green uh, this way or that way. But if, so in other words, okay, there are, uh, what do they call them? Universal constants. Weak and strong nuclear force, magnetic force, gravitic force, etc. So they're like these basic elemental forces of gravity and so forth, nuclear, etc. Now, those have to be at a very precise, very, very precise level. Uh, one possibility is that this happened randomly through the spinning of dials until they clicked in this particular formation. The other is that a, an intelligent hand set it to those particular coordinates. Now, I think it is more likely and more logical to think that if these uh, coordinates are so precisely achieved, that there was an intelligent force behind that, 
But I don't deny that it's possible that that isn't the case, right? But I don't need to prove that it isn't the case. I only need to prove that it is possible that it is the case, if you see what I'm saying. So I don't think you can provide an argument which will say that it isn't possible that one explanation for the, crea- the, the creation that we see is intelligent design. There's no possible way you can disprove that. And at the same time, me saying that an intelligent force created things has perfectly valid explanatory power, and you can't say it doesn't. So on that grounds alone, I, I would just say I win because I don't deny you your argument, but you can't deny me mine. So in that point, I'll yield my time. Okay. Are you ready, Hermes? Yes, yes, I am. Be good. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, there was a few things I forgot to um, address um, last time. Uh, one was entropy. Entropy is a highly misunderstood concept, by the way, in, in physics. It's not that things can't lower entropy. It's that the total entropy of the universe is increasing. But there are many processes in uh, the universe that entropy actually decreases in, in, a, in a system but the totality of entropy is increasing. And what entropy really means, and I want to give like a really good understanding of it, is more of pol- a polarity is a, is a I, I know not many people have used this um, to explain it, but polarity really is a, it's a really good way of understanding it. So when it comes to thermodynamics or anything, really, when you want to extract work, you want to have polar opposites, and as those pol- polar opposites get closer to each other, you can extract work from that. Um, as things balance out, you know, when differences balance out, that allows you to extract work from. So here, let me give an example. You could have an engine that's super like powerful and best fuels and whatever, but if its surrounding temperature is super, super hot, you're not going to be able to extract any work because there's no difference in temperature and you know, all that heat all that burning nothing is going to means nothing so you need difference and over time through interaction through you know particles sharing and exchanging information with each other they're becoming more and more balanced and as they become more and more balanced less and less work can be done and entropy is decreasing as a whole however um i don't want to uh, pivot too much or go into a different direction um, but I did have a podcast on my understanding of reality, and I said continuity is, is my understanding of existence, kind of. So it would imply that entropy at some point would have to um, reset or go back somehow. Um, and that's something actually I'm really, really interested in, in working and proving. Um, like, can a, can a system go back to the initial state after, you know, given enough steps? And I think maybe, I don't know, uh, that would be interesting, you know, return to, to low entropy. Uh, but that's that. Um, but yeah, again, as I said, you can have lots of events in reality of cooling down, planets freezing, that's lowering entropy. Um, crystals, lowering entropy. All of that. It's, you know, it's just what it is. Um, now, let's, uh, let's go back to why um, I, I'm not okay with uh, just saying both are logically equivalent. Um, I, as, I, as I pointed out, when you entertain one idea, which is creator, it leads to a, a cr- critical error, which is greatness, or sorry, the greatest needs greater, needs to invoke greater. Greatest cannot invoke greater. That is a flaw. And that was the, the key point of my argument, really, is, is that as, as for uh, epistemologically valid, uh, as I said, if we observe, we do see billions of years of trial and error. Um, and we, we see quite, quite dumb designs, actually. And we see a lot of species that have been wiped out. Actually, 99% of species have been wiped out. Nothing intelligent about that. Um, and uh, let's see, what else? Not random. Oh, yeah, by the way, I'm not saying the universe is random. I, I, I despise the word random. Random simply means not knowing. Um, I, I actually do not believe the universe is random, not at all. I think the universe is perfectly logical. It's an absolute logical machine. It's a, the universe in its entirety is just one logical machine. Um, you can think of it that way. A perfect logical machine that never contradicts itself. Uh, that's, that's the way I, I see it. Um, 
And uh, I think there's far more epistemological evidence that backs that up. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Mm, and, uh, let's see. Also, um, uh, when we uh, go back also and look at observations in cells and, sorry, uh, biology, we do see single cell to multi cell and all that, you know, stuff. So we do definitely see a buildup rather than a breakdown or devolution, we see an increase in complexity. And also for the, the Shakespeare thing, um, sure, you know, you can uh, say, hey, uh, it's more likely that some human wrote it. Totally, that's, that's not, you know, whatever, but who created the human, right? And then you entertain that eventually all the way back to, you know, where it will re uh, reach, and it goes down to single cell life form, really, and evolution. It becomes lesser and lesser and lesser, not greater and greater and greater, um, whereas, the idea of a creator universe or a universe created by a supreme god, it does not have that pattern. It has the pattern of the greatest, but time. no, okay, I'm sorry. Is that time? Yes. Okay, so what round or round, sir? You're on round four, Shogun. Okay, it's so round four or five. Okay, so I'm going to begin now. So again, it's going to seem like I am repeating these points in a way that's redundant and silly but it's necessary. So what we're really trying to do here is determine how we account for existence. We, me and you both concede that existence exists, right? You're not saying existence doesn't exist, neither am I. So what we're trying to account for is how it exists and why, right? Now you are saying that it exists through a random process of blind chance and time, and I would concede that's possible. I am saying it is a process of creation that you know god created the heavens and the earth right and you must also in order to be logically consistent and intellectually honest can see that this is also possible so in the same way that i have conceded your position is possible but unproven you would have to concede mine because you cannot disprove it right there is nothing logically inconsistent about a intelligent designer so if you imagine this right i mean watchmaker argument in the modern world you're walking along the beach, you find a supercomputer on the beach. One possibility, this somehow, you know, randomly came together. The other, uh, some kind of intelligent force created it. Now, of course, I would argue it is much more likely that it, its inherent complexity is a result of uh, an intelligent process. But I'll grant you it's not necessarily the case. So... All you have to do, essentially, is be intellectually honest enough to admit that my position is unfalsifiable and logically consistent. And if you do that, you'll just have to accept that there are two ways to look at this situation. One is creationist and one is not creationist. But if your position is that your position is more logical and my position is less logical, I don't think you have the slightest foundation for that whatsoever. And I'll yield my time at that point. Okay, thank you. Um, Hermes, are you ready to go? Yes, I am. Okay. All right, um, so you, you mentioned existence, um, and, that, and you know, we both agree that existence exists. I mean, um, yeah, self-evident, it's in the word. Um, but the idea that existence is dependent on something outside of existence also falls flat on its face because for something to be outside of existence by definition I mean it does not exist so for existence to be limited by some external force um that's impossible existence is self-justified so um this idea that existence requires us to justify it is i think rather insane now um for the reason why i was saying why I, well, I infer that, you know, the universe has a mechanical system, and I, and I gave countless examples. Um, so I, I believe that alone makes the argument superior, uh, logically. But the, the kicker, as I said, was the, the, crit the critical error when you entertain the idea of a creator. I'm going to also entertain the watchmaker argument as well. But as I said, the creator, greatest, greatest, cannot have a greater blah, blah, blah. If you can tell me how to resolve that critical error, uh, perhaps I would then be able to concede and say they're logically equivalent. However, without that, um, I can actually basically rule out creation because critical, uh, and a contradiction in anything is absolute dismissal. When you entertain the idea of a creator, 
um, the greatest creator, you reach a critical error, whereas the greatest creator would need to invoke a greater creator uh, to create it. And that's not literally not possible. Um, it's a logical error. And now let's entertain the watchmaker argument. So let's just say we find a watch and then we can infer, hey, there's a watchmaker. But what about the watchmaker? The, who created the watchmaker? Oh, it's parents. What about the parents? The parents, the parents, the parents. Oh, monkeys, uh, you know, all the way back to evolution. So when we entertain the watchmaker argument, we actually come to a rational answer. There is an answer. Um, it's, it's trial and error, biology, particles, colliding, and not random, logical, mathematical. Um, I, I despise the word random. Uh, and that's not what I stand for at all. I absolutely believe in an orderly universe. And just like Einstein said, I don't believe that God plays dice at all. Um, I, I think that's kind of a stupid way of putting it because, you know, God, why would you invoke that? But the idea that the universe is, is random is, is insane because obviously we see a structured order, orderly pattern to it. In fact, the universe is the most orderly thing ever. Um, there's, it's, it is the, the only thing by which has no contradiction. Um, so there's that. And uh, yeah, basically, as I said, if you can uh, explain um, you know, evolution and why that is less like, so the mechanical arguments that I pro provide is backed by trial and error and billions of years of evolution. We have evidence of it, we have fossils of it, it's there. Therefore, I can say, I can infer that the creationist argument is far weaker epistemologically, um, just based on that. Um, but then there was, two um, there was one critical error, which I already pointed out. So if you can address those things, then I would gladly um, concede and say that they are equivalent. Uh, and uh, yeah, I concede. I'm sorry, I'm done. I yield my time. All right, thank you. Shogun, are you ready? Yes, I am. So, thank you. So, uh, Hermie is my friend, right? So, if uh, I was to express what I think your position is, right, you would believe it is invalid or untrue or, you know, ridiculous to say that everything that exists exists because it was created by an intelligent force. However, in reality, this is a completely logically coherent position. And your uh, belief that it isn't is actually a sort of prejudicial bias uh, that has no epistemological or ontological validity whatsoever. So you just think it is invalid to postulate a creator, but it isn't. And you have no way to say that it is because there is nothing logically inconsistent or incoherent about um, a system where a creator made things the way that they are. So if you have these uh, nuclear forces and, you know, basic uh, prime forces, uh, you just say, okay, this intelligent being set them the way that they are, like a scientist making a simulation. And therefore, we have this wonderful simulation that we have with trees and people and beautiful girls and sunsets, etc. Right? Totally coherent. It's just totally logical. And this idea that it seems that you have that this is somehow not logical is totally invalid so i'm not claiming that i can prove that a creator is a better explanation i'm claiming that you cannot say it's not a valid explanation and you also cannot prove that your explanation is better either so uh there's nothing more valid in other regards now let's do a little thought experiment in the beginning there was nothing god existed God created the universe. Okay? Now, this little thought experiment is completely logically coherent. There's no problems with it. There's no logical inconsistency with it whatsoever. It just says an omnipotent being created everything. Boom. You will have some kind of idea that this is invalid, but it just isn't. You can't make a logical claim that this is invalid. So, in other words, if you have the story of Game of Thrones, it's possible that George R. R. Martin wrote it. If you have the story of Dune, it's possible that um, Frank Herbert wrote it. And if you have the story of uh, Lord of the Rings, it's possible that Tolkien wrote it. Now, you could also say that some random number-generating machine wrote it. Sure, 
but that's stupid. That's not what happened. <laughs> it's just simply dumb and, and wrong. And I'll yield my time on that. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Shogun. Are you ready, Hermes? Is this last round? Yes. All right, sure, I'm ready. That's going to be a quick one, by the way, because I don't really think there's much more I can flesh out here. But I'm going to address the last argument, which was the, you said at the beginning, um, God existed and God created the universe. So when you say at the beginning, you're already implying that time and space exist. Um, time, beginning, exist. So existence is already there. Time already exists, interestingly. Um, then we're, you're saying God existed, but then existence is, 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 the, is rather uh, what's permanence and doesn't need justification. God actually needs existence, not the other way around. God needs to exist to create the existence of the universe. I mean, that's kind of insane when you think about it. <laughs> because you try to explain existence, and then you're, you're saying God exists, so you're kind of shifting the goalpost. Uh, so there's that. But um, I don't know what else to... Uh, Point out. I, I think I've, I've given my justifications as to as to why um, creation is actually, again incoherent. You could, you, could, you could say that I'm wrong. Fine. Um, we can agree to disagree. Totally fine. But I have given my justifications. Um, one was the critical error of greatest cannot invoke and greater, and the second one was we observe a mechanical process by which things come about. Um, and also we observe a lot of error in the universe, which, you know, again, points out against uh, intelligent design. We see a, a massive void uh, in the most of the universe when it comes to it being conducive towards life. Uh, what else? What else? Um, uh, I've already given an alternative explanation, and it, again, doesn't have to be random, but I've given an alternative explanation by which it can um, all permutations can come about mechanically, and again, if we look at the universe, we see a mechanical pattern of logic uh, always holding true. Certain patterns always hold true, and that was that's what gives structure to the universe. If the universe was not logical, there would be no structure. There would be no physics. There would be no geometry. There would be nothing. Um, there would be no physics. So. Uh, when it comes to you know the universe having structure, I think we both agree on that. Um, however, I will not go further uh, beyond and invoke intelligence um, for the reason that it leads to those errors. And another reason that I, I would not invoke creationism or a creator is that it doesn't really ever answer the, the question of complexity. It really doesn't. You're just saying complexity, greater complexity, but where does complexity even come from? Or where does existence even come from? It doesn't, it doesn't answer the core issue. Of course, I have already pointed out that existence, legit, by definition, cannot be limited by anything. Um, because it, like, literally, it, it, for it to be outside of existence, it won't exist. Therefore, it can't affect existence. I mean, it's really the most absolute thing in this universe that I can think of is existence. And, uh, I know I'm going on a tangent, but it doesn't matter. I have a few extra minutes. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it for a little mini story. Um, when I did DMT, and the biggest one that I ever did, um, the one that almost lasted two hours with heavy hormonal dosing, I don't even know how much fucking milligrams I took. But um, I remember I was repeating one phrase over and over again, like I had discovered the universe or something. I was saying it over and over again with passion. And it was, I am. I am, I am, I am. I was saying it over and over again, but like with, with energy, I was saying it. I don't know why, but now that I, you know, go back and reflect on, on existence, um, I, I understand why existence is, is supreme. Um, it literally is the absolute. Nothing okay. goes above existence. Um, so that's where I stand. And uh, I think we're going to have to agree to disagree, but I'm very glad that uh, I got to flesh out my arguments. And at the end of the day, um, this has helped a lot with me writing uh, what I wanted to write about. So thank you for that. I yield. Thank you. And uh, I don't know if that was um, the end of the turns or not, but I'm happy to end it kind of there. Okay. Yeah, that, that was the end of the turns.
Perfect. Fantastic. So thank you, uh, Hermes. Uh, that was interesting. Uh, I don't think we'll bother to do the usual like um, poll because there's not that many people here to vote. But uh, again, there's no winners or losers. It's just a conversation. But I think it is a good discussion that we have had. And we will continue uh, in this uh, series of debates uh, on topics related to religion, etc. So thank you, Hermes. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Welcome back, Belushi. And uh, we will conclude now. Please make sure you follow us on the YouTube and BitChute channels and on Podbean. And join the Roundtable Discord server where we record this every day at 8 p.m. Thanks, guys. And let's jump up to uh, the pub, I guess, where um, people are. And we'll, we'll go from there. But this was very good. Thank you. <clears throat> I need to enter the command for the. Yeah, um, I'm certainly.